Hey everyone, this is Yami, your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have April's Look For Less Challenge. The Look For Less Challenge is a monthly challenge that I host every month with a different co-host. Don't forget that this month my co-host was Courtney with Creative on the Cheap. And make sure you go to her channel afterwards to check out what she created for this month's Look For Less. If you participated this month, there is a playlist link in my description box below where you can add your video as well. I can't wait to share what I created for this month's Look For Less, and I can't wait to see what everybody else did on their channels as well. All right, let's get started. So for this month's Look For Less, I decided to do two different projects. And the inspiration for my first piece is this hyacinth urn that I found on Ballard Design's website. I absolutely love this urn. I love the texture of it and the shape, but for $74 on sale, it's still not worth it for me. And I think it has that perfect coastal farmhouse look. So I had an idea, and I've actually had this idea for a while, on how to replicate a look like this. So here's what I did. When I did my last look for less, if you recall, I had another one of these little pieces that I used for my last planter. However, when I was at Goodwill, I went ahead and bought a second one and I bought this face while I was there. This was actually 50 cents instead of 99 cents because it was half off because it was the red color of the day. I went ahead and thought that these two together would be perfect for this project. I made sure everything was cleaned off with some rubbing alcohol and then I took some E6000 and adhered it to the top of that little candle holder so it would hold on to the base. Because I wanted a strong hold, I made sure to let this sit overnight so it would dry completely before I did anything with it. Then I gave the silver portion one coat of brown paint. Now the vase will be covered, however, I didn't want any of that silver peeking through. Next, I had purchased this little hula skirt over at Hobby Lobby. Now you can buy these for $4.99 and I used my 40% coupon so it was even cheaper. I know that Dollar Tree sells some over the summertime, however, they're not as nice as this one and I like the colors of this a little bit better. Now what you want to do is you want to braid the hula skirt and I did this by using six strands divided into three groups of two to make my braids. You're going to want to make quite a few of these depending on the size of your project. And once you have all the braids you need, you are going to snip each one individually. I didn't do anything with the end of the first braid that I applied on the vase. Now I left it frayed like that, but that was because I was going to go back around and cover that end, as you will see in just a minute. And I use hot glue to adhere that braid onto that little piece that you see right there. Now I wanted to make sure that this braid stayed secure, so I did use quite a bit of glue all around. And when I got to that little first end piece, I did cut off some excess fraying from the braid and I glued it right on top of that little part that you see right there. I'm trying to squish it down so that it's not too bulky. Now once that frayed edge of the braid is covered, I pull the braid really tight and then I start my second row right above that first one. Then once I get to the edge of that braid, and not all of it is going to be able to be used because not everything is the same length, um, what I do is I cut off the excess and then I apply it to the base just like that and I glue that frayed edge right down. And I don't fold it over or anything because I want to make sure it's nice and flat so when I take my new edge of braid, it goes right on top and it's not too bulky. So this time with my new braid, as you can see here, and I'll show you in just a second, I do have that edge folded over really nice and tightly so that it goes over that other frayed edge and kind of looks like it's a continuous braid. And then I just continue to wrap it around really nice and tight. And folding over that new edge every time is really simple. I just take a little bit of hot glue and fold over the end just like that. 
until it's completely nice and sealed. And sometimes I need a little bit more hot glue, but it will stay in place. And I repeat the process going up the vase. Now once I get to the glass portion, I do change my application a little bit because hot glue does not really stick to glass. So I had to do a combination of glues. So when I got to the glass, what I did was I took a little bit of E6000 and put it on the glass. And then I would come back with the hot glue gun and put a small line right up against that previous braid so that the new braid could adhere to it and hold while the E6000 was drying. And I found that this actually worked really well and it gave me a really nice stiff hold and those braids are not going anywhere. And that is it for this project. Now, of course, you don't have to use a glass vase for this, but it is what I had and I like the shape of it and I absolutely love how it turned out because I can actually put real flowers in this vase. And I don't think you can tell that this was originally a hula skirt. Now, I did want to show how it looks like up against a real basket and I think it looks pretty good. All right, so on to project number two. I'm not sure if you know, but apparently moss is really cool to have in cement bowls, because that is the trend right now. And it's an expensive trend, because at $182, I would rather look at the moss growing out in my yard. But I thought I would give it a try because it is found in a lot of farmhouse styled homes right now. But I thought that just moss in a bowl would be a little bit plain. So I came across this artificial planter of succulents in another cement bowl. So I thought I would combine both ideas together. So using what I had on hand, I had this clear plastic bowl from Dollar Tree that I had gotten a while back and I decided to go and use it because I thought it was the perfect size and shape. Of course, you can use whatever bowl that you have on hand. And I happen to have this textured chalk paint by Folk Arts Home Decor line. Now, this was a sample that was given to me a while ago, so I thought I would try it. It's not the actual color, but it's okay because I can actually make my own. But the reason I wanted to try this was is because it's textured. It's got like little pieces of dried up, I don't even know if it's sand, but it's gonna be really cool. I think it'll actually give a nice effect to the paint in the very end. And I try to do a little close up to see if you guys can actually see the texture in the paint. So I painted it all the way around in nice long strokes as you see me do here and I did the bottom, all the sides and I even did the top rim. After that was dry, I tried on a new layer of paint in a different color. Now just to show you guys that not everything always comes out the way it's supposed to, this was still too brown for me. It was the color Castle, I believe, and it was a chalk paint. And then I decided to mix it up with another one and it was still too light. I wanted that darker actual cement look from those images. So this wasn't working either. However, I went ahead and added it through the entire bowl. First of all, because I had already mixed it. And second of all, because I thought, why not have another layer of paint on there to give it more texture? And I wasn't even that thorough with the paint. I actually left a lot of bare spots because I did want it to look a little bit rough. So finally what I did to get my color was take some black chalk paint and some white chalk paint in the color white Adirondack that I use all the time. And I mixed it up in a bowl to get that cooler cement look. Now what I did was I didn't actually mix the paint thoroughly. I kind of left little streaks as you can see because if you recall, cement is not always cast evenly. There's always gonna be variations of color. So I thought having some white peek through, some gray, and even some black streaks, that that actually gave it a nice touch. Mm -hmm. 
And if for any reason I found any clumps or lumps in my paint and it got on the bowl, I left them because I thought the added texture actually worked this time. Now after I had left that thoroughly dry, I took some styrofoam pieces that I already had, added a little bit of hot glue just to keep it still in the actual bowl and placed it in the center. And then went in and filled in some of the gaps with some floral foam. And then going through some of my moving boxes that I still haven't unpacked, I found this little Ziploc bag with some floral moss, some moss balls, leaves, even succulents. So I thought it would be fun to use some of this stuff that just so happened I already had. So I started with the moss balls first, just hot gluing them on different areas on the styrofoam. And then I added the floral moss everywhere else to make sure all the gaps and all the foam was covered. After that was done, I decided to add three little succulents. This cellar tree succulent was actually new this year. I hadn't seen these blue ones. They were out really early in February. And all I did was take the plastic covering on the bottom of the succulents off and then cut the wire a little bit and then just add it to the top. And that was it. My ridiculously expensive cement bowl knockoff was complete. Now I know this isn't as large as some of the ones that were online. However, I still think this came out pretty darn cute. I was very happy with how it turned out. I really do love that blue color of that succulent. You guys know I love blues. And that texture on that bowl was pretty darn close to cement. I'm really glad I tried out that paint and now I want to add it to other things that I have around the house. I'm curious to see what you think about this faux cement technique. And of course we have to do those price comparisons. The original urn was $74, but with all of the thrifted items that I got and that little grass skirt, I only paid $4.50 to recreate the similar look. I actually would like to know if you guys have any ideas on what I can use to dye that hula skirt to make it a little bit darker, but I do enjoy the natural look it has. And for the faux cement planter, I decided to compare it to the one with succulents because after all, mine had succulents. But the original was $286 for a bowl and I actually already had all of that stuff on hand. But if you were to buy all of the supplies like the moss and the succulents and the foam, you would pay about $7. So on in all, I think both of these were pretty successful dupes. And I'm curious to know which one of these dupes was your favorite. I hope you enjoyed this month's challenge. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought of this month's look for less in the comments below. Don't forget to check out that playlist. And thank you so much, Courtney, for being my co-host this month. It was a pleasure having you. And I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, adios. <laughs>